All right, looks like we're alive. Hello, everyone, and welcome <clears throat> to yet another Azuzin session. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and start the stream as usual. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Red Circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch? Let me copy paste the, uh, the title of today's stream. Today we're working on a simple OpenGL uh, renderer in C. Right. So, um, of course, I forgot to actually do HTTPS, twitch.tv slash todding. And of course, I forgot to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. Uh, there we go. I hope that actually issues the ping. You, you never know with Discord. You know, Discord is a very weird platform. But anyway, so today we're going to have a logical continuation of the session that I did on YouTube. Uh, you can find the session in here, right? So here it is, uh, coding my own text editor again. Yeah, yeah, so it stands for, for again. So this uh, session was actually about getting back to uh, to my old text editor project uh, called Dead, uh, which is a dramatic editor. Right, so uh, let's take a look at this project, right? So uh, there we go. Uh, let's rebuild it one more time. I already rebuilt it before the stream, but I want to do that one more time, just in case. Right, so, and if you start this text editor, this is what you greet it with, which is kind of weird, like, what the fuck is this text editor? And then you start typing, right. So, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, right, so, and basically the, the editor has a camera that sort of adjusts uh, as you type, uh, right, to create this dramatic effect. And all of that is achieved through, of course, OpenGL and um, so on and so forth. So the thing that, that I did on the previous session is basically I ported the um, text representation that we discovered while working on uh, NoED uh, to this text editor, which enabled all of this cool feature of being able to navigate properly, to delete the lines properly, and don't worry about anything else. Uh, right, so it, it feels like a proper text editor now in terms of like what kind of operations you can do, right? So like uh, wrapping the route when you go too much to the far, to, to the far right and uh, so on and so forth, right? So uh, while I was actually getting back to the code base that I haven't touched for a, basically a year, yeah, I think the last time I checked it was like a year, yeah, last year, as you can see it says here. So last year, as I was going through uh, the code base, I found a lot of cringe, which is usually a good thing, right? So people say that if you look at your old code and you cringe, that means you are improving, right? So, and I'm really glad to, uh, to tell you that I found cringe in my code. Uh, the cringe comes in a form that uh, I have too many renderers. Right, so, and by renderer, I mean it's sort of like a separate entity that is responsible for rendering very specific thing. For example, I have a separate renderer for glyphs, which kind of makes sense, right? So maybe you want to have uh, something like, you know, specialized instant rendering uh, for the glyphs and stuff like that, especially if you use monospace font. Uh, so you want to have some sort of like a tile renderer and whatnot. But what's interesting is that we are not really using monospace, monospace font in here. We do use monospace font right now, but our system is built so you can use any font uh, with variable width and stuff like that. So because of that, the renderer is very, very generic, so it doesn't really need to be like a separate own thing. And on top of that, we have a renderer specifically for one single cursor, right? So um, so the definition of the renderer is kind of blurry, it's kind of fuzzy. It's kind of difficult to tell what it is, but it's basically a collection of uh, shader programs, uh, vertex buffers, and it's like its own thing that usually issues its own separate draw call. This is how I would probably define it. Right, and basically the glyphs and the cursor are rendered by separate renderers, right? And it's it's fine, I guess. It's not like it slows down anything, but in terms of the code maintenance, it's kind of a pain and it's kind of a cringe, I would say. Uh, you know what I would prefer instead? I would prefer something like simp, right? I think, I think working with Jai kind of infected me with uh, too too many John's ideas, right? So and now I, I want to have simp, and by, by simp I mean, uh, right? If you ever watched any of the Jai streams or um, programmed in Jai yourself, because it's available to quite a few people um, in a form of a beta. I think like a couple of hundreds of people already have an access to this language, right? So you probably heard about simp, which is um, basically a simple uh, graphics library, kind of like SDL, but I think it's a little bit more flexible than SDL. At least it can render more primitives. 
Uh, right, and essentially what you have in here, you have a very powerful function, which is something like immediate triangle. Right, so yeah, th this one. It's a very powerful function, which renders the triangle in three-dimensional space, by the way. Uh, right, and this is basically the, the only function that exists in here. Uh, like uh, All of the other functions are sort of built on top of immediate triangle and what it allows you to do it just like it accepts the vertices of the triangle then it accepts the colors of the vertices of the triangle and it also accepts UV coordinates of the vertices of the triangle so here it also takes normal I'm not sure if I personally need it right now but we'll see uh, right and essentially uh, that is basically it. And there is a system that allows you to switch the shaders, right? So uh, you can switch the shader that only renders the colors, right? Or you can switch the shader that only renders the current texture, um, right? And maybe you can have several textures, though I never use textures with Sim, but uh, apparently you can do that. And depending on what's the current shader or what's the current texture, this specific function is going to just draw this triangle differently, uh, right? So, and if I had just this, I would be perfectly happy because in our renderer, as far as I know, uh, glyphs are stored in the texture atlas, right? So I, I could just set the current texture at the texture atlas and then rendering the glyphs would be just a matter of figuring out the UV coordinates. And as far as I know, I already figured them out, right? So essentially I have glyph metric. And this is where all of the UV coordinates are sort of figured out. And if I need to render the cursor, I would just render two triangles that form a quad, and there you go. So it would be nice to have just like a single renderer, like sim, that just does all of that in the form of a simple function, um, like a render triangle. You know what I mean? Uh, just a simple thing, like a render triangle. Um, yeah, and that's essentially what I wanted to implement today. I wanted to implement like a very simple OpenGL renderer that just does that, uh, right? So um, I, I'm pretty sure that this renderer also batches things up, uh, right? So maybe if you render too many triangles on the same uh, shader program with the same texture, it makes sense to actually uh, accumulate them into an array and then just do a single draw call to draw them simultaneously. So maybe we're, we're gonna also do something like that, uh, but but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, yes, 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 kawaii freaking desu. Let me sip my uh, tea, let me sip my tea, and uh, let's uh, go. I'm going to just open dead, uh, and uh, I want to see how we're going to be approaching all of that. So maybe I'm going to uh, just create a, a separate renderer like we have in here. Elozor subscribed with uh, Twitch Prime for 17 years, saying another early stream pog. Yeah, so recently my um, sleeping schedule has shifted. So... <laughs> Right, so I decided that I'm not going to stick to any specific schedule, right? Uh, I'm going to always stream when I'm not sleepy, right? So, yeah, that's that's basically my decision. Um, yeah. So, uh, the thing about Twitch stream is that they're very time sensitive, right? They're extremely time sensitive, and if you stream not at the right time, you don't get enough viewers, so your channel doesn't grow as quickly as it should be growing. So there is like th this kind of stuff uh, going on. But I think I probably don't care anymore, <laughs> honestly. And furthermore, if I'm going to be uploading these streams in the future on YouTube, right, if they're good enough, it doesn't really matter anymore, right? So because YouTube is not uh, as time sensitive as Twitch, it's still time sensitive in the sense that uh, you have to like follow the trends and stuff like that. But in terms of like time of the day, it's it's less sensitive, I think. Though I heard people say that there is some sort of like a sensitivity even uh, with the time of the day, but I don't know. I, I think I don't really uh, produce content uh, that requires this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. So we have a cursor renderer. Uh, we also have a free glyph, which is also renderer, right? So the renderer here is called free glyph buffer, but don't get deceived by that. This is actually renderer, uh, right? Because we have a glyphs in here, array of glyphs, and we have 640 of them. <laughs> 640,000 of them, right? So I remember I was making that joke uh, back in the days. Uh, and here we have uh, Glyph itself, 
which is a bunch of attributes right and this is a position this is a size uv coordinates there we go so we already like accept uv coordinates and stuff like that so uh, nothing particular special so what i'm going to create i think i'm going to create a simple renderer right so and i'm going to just follow the general uh, structure of the renderers as i have here in the uh in the project already so i think that's going to be basically the idea so uh simple renderer.h and let me see um if i'm deaf by the way do i have like a i remember back in the days i had a pretty cool um pretty cool snippet right that i could do once and it would expand to the uh to the inclusion guards i think i had it in a separate uh, emacs mode in c mode right because these days i don't really use uh, the stock c uh, c mode of emacs uh, it doesn't work anymore unfortunately so let me let me see so emacs snippets uh c like c mode so the snippet was called uh, let me find the file uh, name once i remember very vividly it's in c plus plus mode so only C++ is allowed to do this kind of stuff. Okay, uh, so let's switch to C++ mode, and then I do bum, and there you go. So as you can see, this specific snippet, on, it looks uh, at the name of the file and just expands to the inclusion guard with the with the name of the file. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, right, snippets C++. Right, so this is once. Uh, it's yeah. So the, the cool thing about yes yeah, snippet, right? So and Emacs has this extension yes yeah, snippet. Uh, there we go. So I'm using this this thing. I'm gonna put it in the description as well here. So Emacs yes snippet x uh, extension. There we go. And I'm gonna also copy paste it in the chat for anyone who's, who's interested. Right. So here it is. Here it is in the chat. Uh, right. And the cool thing about this, uh, you know, extension is that you can actually have Emacs Lisp expressions in here and then they're going to be evaluated when the snippet is expanded. So through these expressions, you can actually get the file name, the current file name, and just transform it so you can use it in the inclusion guard. Uh, I know that you can do pragma, right? Uh, pragma. But for some reason, since it's not standard, I kind of like uh, turned away from it. Even though like every single compiler supports that, but I don't know. It's just a personal preference. I didn't think it matters that much. The, the fact that you can transform the file name in a snippet is actually rather cool. Uh, and it's like very flexible. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway. So uh, I don't have that in SimpC mode anymore, right? So uh, these days I'm using like a simple C mode, uh, right? So maybe I'm gonna give the link to this one. So Sim, I think it's located in my thing in here, SimpC mode, uh, right? So there is a justification for writing my own C mode for Emacs. If you're interested, you can read it in here. And I'm also gonna copy paste uh, this thing to the chat as well for anyone who's watching live. Uh, right, my simple C mod for Emacs, there we go, it's going to be in the description, and there we go. So we need to create the simple renderer, so this is going to distract, simple uh, renderer, renderer, simple renderer. I'm going to be following the general structure of uh, cursor renderer, because that's roughly what I want to have. Uh, right, and for now we are going to have... Uh, I suppose a bunch of uniforms, right? So we have count uniform slots, right? And I think it is defined somewhere here, right? And this basically defines what kind of uniforms we can have in our shaders, um, right? So we can have uh, the current time, right? So the shaders uh, usually know the global time, the amount of seconds, I suppose, since the start of the program, the resolution of the screen, the position of the camera, the shaders know that, the camera scale, right? So all of that information is important to be able to zoom in, zoom out, uh, the cursor position and cursor height. I didn't think it's going to be that important once we implement like a general renderer, right? Because the, uh, rendering the cursor is going to be just basically do, drawing two triangles. And I don't think Shader needs to know all of that stuff in last stroke. Yeah, so already uh, as we implement a simple renderer, I can see what we can remove, right? So 
and re removing things is a sign of simplification and simplification is less code uh, and less code is less surface area for bugs vulnerabilities and stuff like that right so the more code you have the more surface area for different mistakes uh, you basically leave hmm. that's just something that people don't really realize but it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't uh anyway so we have also uniform definition i don't quite remember what it means uh Oh, yeah, I think I know what it means, right? It associates the name of the uniform with its corresponding uh, enumeration index for maybe for readability or maybe for, for location and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure. Again, I haven't touched this code for a year. I don't quite remember what all of that means. Means, uh, means, <laughs> yeah, all of that means, exactly. Uh, right, so we're gonna just do this thing. Uh, so I'm just going to create uniforms. Another thing that I would like to have in here is probably an array of the uh, of the triangles that we're going to be pushing to the to the GPU, uh, right? And the triangle is going to be basically uh, three vertices, right? So and we probably need to also define what is a vertex. Uh, so let me find immediate J, right? So essentially. Uh, a single vertex is going to be the position. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do 3D space. Maybe I'm going to go with 2D space. So it's going to be position, its color, and its uh, UV coordinate. Right. So this is what we're going to have. So let's call it simple vertex. Right. So this is a simple vertex. And in here, we're going to have the position. If I remember correctly, I have LA.H. Yeah, there we go. That's actually pretty cool. So I, have, I actually have vectors. My gut. Uh, this is so convenient. So we're going to have a position. Then I also have uh, four dimensional vectors that I'm going to be using for the colors, right? So here's the color, position, color, and another two dimensional vector for UV coordinates. So uh, we have a simple vertex, right? So this is basically a simple vertex. Uh, do I want to create a structure for a single triangle? I feel like I do want to do that, right? So let's create something like simple uh, triangle and a prefix them with uh, the prefix simple specifically so to indicate that they are part of this simple renderer right so you know to emphasize that it's simple it's just like uh, you have any code you slap a simple prefix in, to, uh, in front of it and it automatically becomes simple it's like curl <laughs> yeah curl easy in the easy API <laughs> right so uh curl standard api was so um complicated to use that they created like an easy version uh easy version api <laughs> and it's literally just the curl thing uh just the curl thing uh easy interface but with the easy uh prefixes slapped slapped in front of it i think yeah, 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 yeah. there we go curl easy in it you know, to, to emphasize that it's not that shady version of API. No, no, not that, that everyone is just like hates. It's, it's the easy one, you know. <laughs> I, just, I just realized, yeah, I just realized how these kind of APIs come to, to reality. Like, just like that. You, you have some clusterfuck of a code, and then you say to yourself, well, I want to simplify that, but I also want to preserve the backend compatibility. Uh, so what do I do? I create an easy, simple version of the API. <laughs> That's literally what I'm doing right now. Uh, that's literally what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> and I remember laughing at this uh, thing in um, uh, in the past and how have the tape table turned. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so the triangle. What, what, what we're gonna have in here? Okay. So the triangle is going to have like uh, three vertices, right? So it's gonna be simple vertex A, B, C. Uh, but quite often you kind of want to access those vertices like in a in a for loop for instance right um so maybe it would make sense to actually do something like v and just say it's an array of three vertices in here uh right so and each vertex is a position color and uv and we're going to be uploading that stuff to the um, um the uh, vertex buffer and then we're going to have shaders that handle all of that and so on and so forth so it's going to be simple trust me uh kappa 
So in here we're gonna have a simple triangle and uh, we're gonna have a bunch of triangles. And how many triangles we're gonna have? So in the past, um, I've been using like a fixed array, right? Because essentially with a fixed array, I don't have to manage memory that, that much. And I'm, as any sort of like a developer of a, uh, of a language with garbage collection, I'm batshit scared of managing memory. These days, I probably didn't see enough that I don't care about leaking the memory. So maybe this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be a dynamic array, right? So we can actually turn it into a dynamic array, uh, right? And on top of that, I in the previous session I actually implemented um, a thing to work with dynamic arrays. I actually like ported DA append, right? It's located in the editor in here, so I can actually start using this entire stuff, right? So I think maybe. Uh, it will make it easier, but uh, that will essentially mean that I will have to introduce the array, the dynamic array of the triangles. So we have to say triangles, right? And then we're going to have simple triangle uh, items, right? And then we're going to have something like count and the capacity. For Dakin, thank you so much for three months of uh, Twitch Prime completion. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Without any message, uh, but no message is required, of course. Thank you so much for giving money to Jeffrey Bezos. Unfortunately, these days I don't get any money, but I have a hope that maybe one day, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, the longer the war is going, the less hope I have that I will ever get this money, but uh, we'll see, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, cheers, cheers, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Mm. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so, uh, essentially, we have triangles, and uh, I can just put this thing in here, right? So, we have a bunch of triangles, and that will allow me, right? That will allow me when I have the simple renderer like this to just take the triangles of the simple renderer and just append a new triangle, a new triangle into it, uh, like so, um, right. And then I can super easily to like reset this entire thing by setting the count to zero, uh, right, and start again, right. That way I don't have to worry allocating too little or allocating too much or something like that. Though there's always a danger that uh, I will be stuck in some sort of infinite loop, infinitely pushing the triangles and run out of more, uh, memory. Uh, maybe that's going to happen, but I don't really know. Uh, who said that you're not going to have this problem with the fixed array, but in that case, you're going to actually overflow and just corrupt your entire memory? In any case, just don't write infinite loops, am I right? <laughs> just, just never make a mistake, okay? Uh, why do you need languages like Rust? Just never make mistakes, and that's going to be fine. Anyway, so I think we defined the uh, the data structures for everything in here. Uh, and the usual pattern that I have with my renderers, apparently, I don't remember, this is the code that is written by me one year ago, right? So I don't remember what I was thinking about one year ago, so this is basically going off of these assumptions. So we have an initializer, right? It accepts the pointer to the renderer and also the file names for the vertices, uh, for the vertex shaders and the fragment shader. And I suppose it just creates vertex buffers, uh, loads up and compiles shaders and uh, populates the entire, uh, the entire structure of the renderer. I suppose that's what it does. does. So we also have use, which I suppose uh, does the gl use thingy for like gl use program to activate the current program and stuff like that uh so we also have some stuff this is probably specific for the cursor renderer right i don't think it's like general for uh for for any renderer and we have a draw which performs the draw call i suppose right so here uh we can accumulate some changes i think it's it's better visible in a in a free glyph renderer right in a free glyph renderer i think that's better visible there uh right so here we're basically creating the free glyph uh, renderer with initialization and stuff like that then uh we use it then we push a bunch of glyphs into that thing just push a bunch of glyphs uh so we also have a way to synchronize the buffers i suppose and then we just do draw right and that performs the draw call of uh, opengl so if we take a look at free glyph uh draw where is it where is she it does perform array uh, draw and it's instance as you can see it is in fact instanced 
Oh, why wouldn't be instance? Yeah, anyway. It is, in fact, instanced. Uh, so, anyway, uh, let's go back to simple renderer. All right, let's go back to simple renderer and just starting to initialize shite. Right. Uh, simple renderer init. So here we're gonna accept the simple renderer. It's gonna be uh, abbreviated as SR, right? So then the next thing we're gonna accept is the path to the vertex shader, right? So this is a path to the vertex shader and also path to the fragment shader, right? There we go. So all of these functions return void because I suppose on any error, which is gonna crash the entire thing, which is fine, I guess, at least for now, but I wanna change that paradigm a little bit in the future. So we also need to do use. Um, eh, okay. So simple renderer, renderer SR. And uh, here we're also going to implement that function that I always wanted, right? So simple renderer uh, triangle, right? So it is going to accept the renderer and it's going to just simply provide the same argument. So effectively, this is the function. This is the function from uh, simp I was talking about. Uh, it's going to accept uh, three points, right? So it's going to be back to F, P1. So, but uh, John Cole uh, starts them. This is sus. Wait a second. John, P0, P1, P2. Okay, indexing from zero. C1, C2, C3, indexing from one. And then again, UV0, UV1, U indexing from zero. I'm joking, by the way, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be consistent. We're going to index everything everything from zero, right? We're going to index everything from zero uh, because we are programmers. We always index everything from zero because that's what the extra told us. Uh, the extra proved, uh, actually demonstrated that uh, zero-based indexing is better than one-based indexing. I think there was like a sort of paper written by the extra. The extra... Uh, zero based indexing right so i think he talked about that yeah, yeah, yeah y numbering should start at zero and if the extra said so you better fucking follow because the extra was an angry dude right the extra was a really angry dude right <clears throat> the reason why everyone is so bad shit scared of go to's is because the extra said so he said that go to is bad. And like, look how influential his words are. People to this day still believe that and actually rip off the pages from the textbooks about programming with a page about go to. So if the extra said so, you, you better believe it's true, right? So I'm gonna give the link to, to this article. Interestingly, uh, I never read this article. <laughs> I just always use it as a, as a proof to dab on those mathematicians uh that uh index from one right but i never read it myself maybe i should read it actually myself uh right so let's actually put that in the description for anyone who's interested on youtube right so why numbering should start at zero right i can put it in here so what's interesting is that it, this is basically one of the awds right and awds is the block of the extra. This is actually fascinating. I already talked about it uh, like several times in my streams, but uh, the extra was uh, basically writing blog before internet existed, <laughs> right? So he did the following thing. He invented blogging basically. Uh, so essentially at his university, he would write a blog post, not a uh not a scientific paper nor not nor any of this uh like a formal bullshit he would just like write uh like a blog post in a very free form right and then just uh print a bunch of blog posts and just share among his colleagues and put it on a table somewhere in the university just like uh, give it to as many people as possible and let people discuss it and then he would write another post so he was basically writing blog posts but he was distributing them manually on the paper and th those blog posts are called AWDs. And 
This is AWD 831. But I'm not sure if this is how many he actually wrote, but he wrote a lot of them, right? And people still collect them and uh, try to preserve them, uh, right? So, and this was before the internet existed or anything like that. He was just like writing a blog, uh, blog about programming, which is rather interesting. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is basically the place where uh, they're trying to preserve. There is a PDF. He would sometimes actually write them manually and just like make copies of, of the manual writing. Uh, isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> and he was so ranty. He was he would also rant in these papers, like on Twitter. Yeah, he he would make a Twitter rant threads before Twitter existed. It's insane. <laughs> Dude was ahead of his time. Like seriously, he was ahead of his time. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, all right, anyway. Mm -mm -mm. So let's continue. Uh, so we have P, uh, P0, P1, VEC2F, to P1, VEC2F, to P2. All right, and uh, we're also going to have the colors in here, right? And we have the colors, and the colors are four dimensional vectors, right? For F, and of course, here, this is C, C0, C1, blah, blah, blah. And uh, here we're just gonna have UV. So I'm gonna replace all of the P's with UV's. There we go. Uh, and the next thing I suppose is basically uh, drawing call, right? So we wanna do draw. So, and for now, this is gonna be the entire renderer. Um, and any other functions that you wanna implement, they can be implemented in terms of this one single function. You wanna draw a quad, right? So simple renderer quad. And here you would probably accept uh, this thing and uh, you would say that you accept four of these points. Well, internally, this particular function like quad would be implemented in terms of calling this function twice, right? So you basically would, would tessellate the quad into two triangles and just draw them like that. If you want to draw a circle, you would also uh, draw a circle in a similar way as we drew the circles in a rope, right? So you probably may be seeing uh, my sodium daily uh, rope videos, right? Uh, do, 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 do. So here it is. So there is some some rope stuff in here. So we implemented like a rope simulation, and for these uh, nodes, we actually basically we drew them um, out of the triangles, right? We made a fan of the triangles, and we just created enough triangles so it looks smooth enough, uh, right? To know how to do that, maybe I'm gonna actually give you uh, the link. I'm trying to right click, and I'm faced with the with the classical bug. Uh, with the classical bug. So let me actually fix <laughs> this shit. All right, so uh, let me copy paste it now and I'm gonna put it in the description. Uh, so coding rope in the secret language. Okay, coding rope in Jai. Right, I'm gonna copy paste that for anyone uh, in here. Okay, coding rope in Jai. So yeah, uh, anything can be implemented in terms of uh, in terms of this triangle thingy. Uh, so this is not the cursor. This is simple renderer draw. Simple uh, renderer, and let's create a C function. C C file. Excuse me. I'm gonna also include a simple renderer dot h, and let's just populate all of those things super quick. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can just say unimplemented. I think I should just do something like unimplemented. Uh -huh. So unimplemented. So I want it to crash when it is executed for whatever reason. Uh, use. Uh -huh. uh, triangle. And draw. All right, so I suppose if I just build the current thing, it is not going to complain because we don't build that file in, All right? So what I'll have to do, I'll have to add that file to the uh, to the build script, right? So src 
simple renderer dot c right there we go so that should build it and as we build it it should complain uh right because we probably don't have enough things for instance we don't have the um the vectors so to have an access to them we probably need to include la.h which stands for uh, linear algebra and stuff like that but i'm curious how it is done in here for instance yeah so we essentially just include la and uniforms i think we'll need to include both of them right uh, and we also include this stuff in here so just in case i'm gonna uh, put it in here as well uh, right so it also uses glue for loading the OpenGL extensions and stuff like that. These days I kind of prefer uh, like load all of them myself. Uh, but since this stream is not about like getting rid of the glue, I'm gonna just like follow the, uh, follow the code, right? So the code is like that, so why not? Uh, okay, unimplemented. So let's quickly implement this macro. We define unimplemented. Uh, and it's gonna be a very simple macro. It's gonna accept the message. I'm going to do do while, do while zero, uh, print f, and what we're going to say in here, we're going to say, uh, right, we want to uh, create the position where exactly that happened, uh, right, the file name and the, the line, and say unimplemented, right, and then say the message that the user provided. So quite often it's actually kind of a good idea to maybe do something like this, and then the a args, right, so essentially, uh, the user will have an opportunity to use the format arguments for whatever reason. Usually it's not really needed for unimplemented, but maybe just in case you want to have that. Right, so then I'm going to exit with one. Then I'm going to just exit with one. Okay, so let's actually indent this stuff a little bit and put backslashes at the end of this entire thing and maybe even align uh, backslashes like so. It kind of Oh yeah, I see. It aligned it with this thing. So let's actually do that one more time, uh, right? And bring back uh, this thing to here, right? There we go. Uh, can we compile this stuff now? Now it is compile almost. It is almost compilable. Uh, so what's wrong with that implicit declaration of printf? I'm not sure. I can include the stdio for you, baby. Sure, if you want me to, I can include STDIO. All right, uh, and what did I put? Oh yeah, I, I forgot to provide the, the file path and the lines. So it has to be file and also it has to be a line. Thank you, compiler, very cool. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna do it like that. Uh, yeah, whatever, I don't really care anymore. It actually takes a lot of time to recompile this entire thing and also semicolon. <laughs> I think I started to remember why I just include everything into a single file, uh, right? Because this kind of stuff is just like annoying that I have to wait so much time until it's re rebuild itself. Uh, okay, unused parameter, that's fine. So we have a bunch of unused parameters. Then what it's, it's complaining about? It's primarily complaining about unused parameters. Uh, okay, so it is literally complaining about unused parameters for now. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm just going to leave it as it is. I, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> uh, okay, so we need to initialize this entire thing. So I think I'm going to be initializing it similar to the free glyphs, uh, right? So because we have some buffer in here, as you can see in here, uh, right? So we probably want to do something similar. Um, all right. Uh, two, 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 free glyph.c and let's take a look at the initialization so this is going to be init function uh, and yeah okay so one of the things we have in here we have a VAO which is a vertex array object it's basically the layout of the data that you upload to GPU right so because you can upload some binary data to the GPU uh, but the shaders won't know how to exactly interpret it, uh, right? So what what is where, uh, right? So we have a thing called vertex attributes, but where are the, those vertex attributes within the vertex buffer, uh, right? And it's sort of described via the vertex array object, I think, right? Pretty sure I, th I think that's how, how it is. Uh, it's kind of complicated. No, nobody really knows how it works, right? So <laughs> I might be wrong on that. Uh, but in any case, uh, we, we need uh, some sort of a, like a field within the renderer that holds the information about that stuff. 
right simple render dot h and i'm gonna go here and just like you know just allocate it so i think i need to go to freak with h in here and let's find vao here it is yeah there we go so jail unit vao uh, i'm gonna put it in here so we we'll also allocate the id for the program for the shader program i think i'm gonna put it here as well because it's gonna be useful uh, in the future uh, so freak with c Okay, as we initialized, we need to do uh, gel gen vertex array, right? So we initialize in vertex array. This one has to be SR and we bind it. So making it like the current one, right? So that's the, uh, that's the thing we're currently working on. Uh, and then we need to create VBO, right? So we generated VBO buffer. We bind that specific buffer right we're binding the specific buffer and we are allocating ah and we're actually allocating like a fixed size of uh of the buffer maybe that's why i have a fixed um fixed array in here mm -hmm. yeah that's probably why but is there any way to extend the VBO? Is that a thing people often do in OpenGL? That's a very good question. Uh, right, I'm really curious about OpenGL. Uh, extend or grow uh, VBO. Is that something people do? Is it possible to in place resize VBOs? Okay, so let's actually read what people say on Stack Overflow. It would be better to actually maybe uh, ask to ChatGPT, but again, I don't have an access to ChatGPT. Right. Uh, I think without doing a copy, you won't get around this. Okay, that, that's actually enough for me, <laughs> right? Because I can already imagine how you would do that. You would just basically create a second VBO and just copy it there, uh, right? Because the only way to resize the buffer to call GL buffer, and there is in my opinion, no way to tell the driver to keep the old data, which you probably can do at least is uh, not copied. Okay, I see. So maybe because of that, maybe because of that, in a simple render, we're going to have a fixed amount of triangles, right? So let's just have a fixed amount of triangles and that is it. Uh, so instead of this dynamic array, right? So let's say we're gonna have a single triangle and this is triangles. And um, let's say we're going to have simple triangle uh, capacity, right? And how many triangles do we want to have in here? Uh, let's say we're going to have well, 640 kilobytes, <laughs> right? Classic, 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 classic. So we have a capacity and let's also introduce triangles count, right? There we go. Um, all right, let's abandon this idea of dynamic arrays and stuff like that because that's probably why i was doing that in opengl because it doesn't really work out right it's better to have fixed stuff uh and the interesting question is that what if you have too many triangles right how do you draw them well you can basically split into separate draw calls right if you have twice as many triangles you can first draw first 440,000 triangles and then another uh, 440,000 tri triangles, right? So we can always just split between uh, draw calls. I don't think is that is that big of a deal. Okay, buffer data, drill array. So this is where I basically create the buffer. Uh, so the buffer triangles. And uh, so I also provide the pointer to this thing, right? So the triangles. I'm not sure if you can see shit in this mist, by the way. I'm just realizing that... Uh, I forgot to put this thing in here. I keep forgetting it. Maybe I should add it to my, uh, you know, preparation to-do list. Um, right. So, which also means that, I don't know, maybe I'm going to just put like a dummy thing in here. So I know that not to read anything from here. So now, uh, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> I can now see everything perfectly. Uh, and this thing is dynamic. That means we're going to be actually changing it uh, quite often. Actually, going to be changing it quite often. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, there is a very, very interesting thing that I would like to have. I think I want to update my Emacs config because I had a better 
uh, key bindings for navigating between the windows and window in a, t in a terminology of Emacs is like this thing. So the, usually you navigate between the windows by pressing Control X O, right? And it just like goes like through the um, uh, through all of the windows. You can't really choose to which window to go, right? You, you can't really pick. It just goes to the next window. Maybe there is some sort of a way, but it's not particularly convenient. So recently I found. Um, a way to simplify that uh right so dot files i mean you can always remap but there, there is a standard standard function that actually remaps that shit for you uh right so enable uh, did i not i think i didn't commit it yeah there was a function mm -hmm. Max window move bindings. Other window. Man, I forgot what it's called. I forgot what it's called. So maybe I'm gonna actually go to uh, hold on, right. Uh, maxim. And what is it called? Emax. Uh, uh, yeah, wind move default key bindings, right? So this function. Um, so it's it's kind of difficult to remember uh, this name, but essentially it allows you to move between the windows by pressing shift and arrows to which window you're gonna go. I want to go to the bottom one. Shift down, and it goes down. Shift up it goes up shift right it goes to the right right and you can navigate like that i don't really know why this is not a default probably because it's trying to be like a normie friendly in the sense that if you have a normie text editor shift left in a normie text editor is basically selection right so to not take that sort of like a potentially normie friendly key bindings they decided to like disable it and you explicitly enable it if you need to uh, I think that's basically the uh, the reasoning behind that, but I kind of got used to that, and it's something that is like I use almost daily, but but not for on this account for some reason. So I'm, I already enabled it on this account now. Uh, okay, so let me let me see. So th this is basically what I wanted. I wanted to quickly switch between those things, right. more or less. So for glyph C, and this is the buffer data, and uh, then we initialize the attributes. Okay, this one is interesting. Mm -hmm. So we essentially need to have um, a set of attributes somewhere, right? And uh, the attributes we have such attributes as position, uh, size of the of the font, I suppose, UV position, UV size. Uh, foreground color, background color. Uh, we're going to have only like three um, attributes. We're going to, uh, only going to have three attributes, which are these ones, right? Only position, color, and UV coordinates. We're not going to have anything else, right? So only those, only those. Mm, and let me see. Maybe I don't need this kind of system to initialize this kind of stuff, right? Um, so gl enable vertex attribute array so we're going to be enabling the attribute zero right uh, and the attribute we're going to have uh, gl vertex attribute pointer you know what i think i need to do open um, docs gl right i want to have a docs gl and i want to grab gl vertex attribute pointer there we go, uh, gl3, because I want to copy-paste the signature of this thing. Just want to copy-paste the signature of this thing, and I'm going to copy-paste it in here. Uh, man, I wish I had like a code, a copilot or chat GPT or something like that to just simplify all of that copy-paste work for me. But unfortunately, 
it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't so size if i remember correctly it's the number of components right so right now we are working with the position right so this is a position attribute so we have two right so the position is a two-dimensional vector so the type is the um i suppose uh, i don't remember what it's usually it's gel float in our case i'm pretty sure it's gel float uh -huh. gl float right because we have like a vector of float and uh, we don't do any normalization so it's going to be false and stride and this one is really interesting right so basically it explains uh it explains how to find those things right um maybe i can actually describe that Mm -mm -mm. So I'm gonna start my paint, my pain, my pain, my pain. Uh, so we store all of those things in these structures, right? So here is the structure, right? This is the structure, uh, and a single structure in the memory looks like this right so first they have a position right position this is the position uh -huh. then after that we have the color right so color like so then we have uv mm -hmm. like so so this is a single vertex in a memory now imagine that we have an array of them right we have an array of them so the next vertex is going to be here uh, right so it's better to maybe like divide them specifically right so we can see where are the structures themselves the elements of themselves and where are the fields and within this thing we have the uh, position color and uv so the position color uh, uv here we have position color uv position color uh, uv and so on and so forth right through vertex attributes right we describe where those fields within this array of uh, vertices uh, are located right so essentially this entire array is going to be loaded into the gpu memory right we're going to just load this entire thing into the gpu memory and now how we can find the position right all of the positions within that array right so we describe uh, where uh, the array of positions starts okay so we tell it that the array of positions starts in here cool so then we tell it the size of the position through the size of the position it knows uh that okay so it has to take this amount of memory in, and interpret it as the position cool and then we have to tell it how to find the next position uh and this is basically where stride comes in it tells you how much how many bytes you have to jump to the next uh, position right so and you have to uh, jump the size of the structure right and now it knows that okay the next position is located here so i can take this position right and then stride like i jump another stride and you need to jump in here and this is the next position and so on and so forth and you describe that through the attributes right so we have three attributes for the position i say okay it starts in here uh it has this size and you have to jump this many bytes to the next one then I, when i'm going to be describing the color i'm going to say okay it starts in here it has this specific size and this is how much you need to jump to get to get the next color right so and each attribute is basically array and through this uh start stride size i describe where to get the next element in that array so and depending on how you pa pack uh, these different attributes, this description is going to be slightly different, right? So vertex buffer is this data, this raw data, but through description of the vertices, we explain to OpenGL how to interpret that data, right? So, and that's why it's a little bit complicated. And there's, there's also not enough explanation on how it works, uh, right? So this explanation, I had to actually 
work through documentation and tutorials to even understand that it works like that it's it's insane like uh, maybe chat gpt is actually better at like at helping people figure it out but figuring out all of that yourself is really pain in the ass but once you figure out it kind of makes sense oh okay so it's just like it, it makes sense now it reminds me of an interval uh, of a sine wave yeah i suppose i suppose you can select that um all right yes yeah, so mm -mm. All righty, all righty, all righty. So now, so we describe the position, right? So the index of the attribute is, I'm sorry, so my camera keeps moving around. Um, so this is the index of this thing. We say that it has two floats that describes the size then we need to specify the stride and a stride is basically the size of a single element is going to be size of um what is it called simple uh well this one is interesting because it's a simple vertex mm. right so because we don't really have array of vertices we have array of triangles it's triples of the vertices right so it's gonna be rather interesting we'll see how it plays out right. but we have to jump by a simple vertex and the pointer if i remember correctly it's where it starts specifies the offset of the first component right and in our case the offset is zero right so we have to do something like it's it has a type of a pointer but it's actually an absolute value not a yeah it's a relative value not an absolute one right so essentially you have to specify the offset but you have to provide it as a pointer because of some historical reasons i suppose um, anyway so the next thing is going to be something like color right so we have to say uh, gl enable uh, gl enable one so for the color we're going to assign assign index one and we're going to do gl vertex a tree pointer one so here is the size how many components do we have in the color we have four of them right rgb a right red green blue and alpha uh, then each component is a float we do not normalize whatever that means uh, right we do not normalize and the stride is the simple vertex as well. We have to jump the same amount anyway. Uh, regardless of your field in here, you still jump the entire structure to get to the next field. So you can always say uh, the size of, of the single element. The offset is going to be slightly different. So in case of a glyphs, uh, what kind of offset do we say? Uh, we actually take the offset of the field within the structure. We literally use the method offset off right so which is kind of actually cool uh right so this is a macro which accepts the uh, structure and the field name uh, and it tells you offset in bytes within that structure and this is what we can use and it's quite quite important to use that specific function because uh, you may have holes between the fields right so if you want to know more about that you may read something like c uh, struct padding right so C struct padding, structure padding, and uh, packing, and so on and so forth. Uh, right. So that basically means that the whatever fields you put into the structure, they are not uh, laid out uh, continuously. There can be empty holes between them just to align everything properly on in the memory. Uh, for for technical reasons, for usually pl platform specific reasons, to speed things up, or maybe on specific platforms, if things are not aligned, they're impossible to read and write. Right, because maybe reads and writes on certain platform are only aligned and you won't be able to do it otherwise. Right. In, in case of x86-64, I think x86-64 literally doesn't give a shit. And the only reason why people align on that uh, architecture is to just speed things up because if the memory aligned, uh, it just reads and writes faster. Though it's not 100% true. I think CMD instructions do require aligning certain memory aligning because i remember when i like did a little bit of a cmd i had like a lot of sec faults because the the vectors in my memory were not aligned to to the page right but it's a page alignment so usually what c compiler does it aligns everything to to the word right 
And page alignment is not really something that, that the compiler do. Usually, quite often, you have to like do it on like yourself. All right, which is a separate pain in the ass. Which is a separate pain in the ass. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what do we want to do in here? So I want to do offset of uh, so simple vertex, and uh, this is offset for specifically color, and then we probably want to cast that to white stuff. And since we're like using for the sake of consistency, I feel like we have to use this thing here as well, even though it's it's probably going to be zero, uh, right? But let's just not uh, let's just like use it for for the sake of consistency, and that is it. Okay, so this is this was the color, and the next one is going to be UV coordinate, right? For the UV coordinates, let's assign uh, the index two, right? So this is the index two GL vertex at three pointer. So two in UV coordinates we have a uh, two floats, uh, right? The stride is the same; it's a simple vertex, and the offset is the offset specifically for the for the UV coordinates. Right, so it's going to be given. There we go. We initialized all of the uh, all of the attributes. For the attribute indices, I usually create enumeration. So maybe we can even steal that stuff from here. Uh, right. So it's probably located somewhere here. So where are the attributes? There we go. So here are the attributes. So maybe I can do a very similar thing uh, because it's kind of convenient in some sense. I think. A simple uh, vertex ATTR, and what we have in here is a simple vertex ATTR position, which is initially zero. Uh, then it's called position. Then what is it called? Size and UV, right? So and it will automatically uh, enumerate itself from zero to one, and we don't have to really worry about it too much. So that means in here we can always just do that. So this is position. Uh, this one is going to be uh, color. Did I call it size? Why did I call it size? I'm an idiot because I just copy pasted. Should have not called it si size. Should have called it color. Right. So we don't really have size for that specific renderer. Uh, this one is UV coordinates. Mm, yeah, maybe. cool. So we initialized all of the vertices. What else do we need to do? Let's find out. So we also specify some sort of a divisor in here. I'm not sure if it's going to be very useful for us. So I'm probably not going to do that. OK, so the next thing we do, we also initialize shaders. Uh, right, so here we also have some camera. Um, Right, we also have some camera, but we'll see if it is useful at all. Okay. So here are the shaders. We compiling the first shader. All right, and this is a vertex shader. So then we're compiling the fragment shader. And that is it. So let's say that we're going to have two of them, right? So this is a two shaders. The next thing we do, we create the program. So when you're compiling shaders in OpenGL, you literally have to simulate how it is done in C, right? So you have several shaders, you have to compile them, and then you have to link them. Right. So, <laughs> and this is probably because you can... Uh, so you can reuse some of the shaders between several programs. So it's it's literally trying to simulate the C compilation process at runtime uh, for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why, but it is what it is. Right. So the next thing we want to do, we want to attach the shaders to the uh, to the program, right? So we're attaching it to the program, and then we use the program, right? We just use the program, and there we go. The program is officially used. Cool. Uh, so we also get the uni uniform locations, uh, so we can assign them. Uh, the next thing in the free glyph render is actually just doing the metrics with the glyphs and whatnot. Uh, all of that is probably going to be factored out to a separate thing outside of the render. But apart from that, this is it. 
essentially this is it except uh yeah i need to take the uh, uniform locations uh right so the uniform locations this is sr this is sr this is sr and that is basically it i hope uh right so i hope that is basically it let's try to compile that and go through the compilation errors and see how miserably we failed it's gonna be interesting Mm, okay, compile shader file. Let's let's try to find this thing. This thing is located in GL extra. Uh, okay, so let's do GL extra. Not not Dijkstra, but GL extra. I'm sorry, that was dumb. Uh, so okay, I did some oopsie doopsie. That's fine. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So we have SR. okay. So we technically compiled everything. Everything is compilable. It kind of annoys me uh, the, um, uh, the the warnings, right? That complain about unused variables. Uh, I could do something like unused SR, but for example, in here, it's gonna get to a whole new annoyance level. But I mean, with the copy paste, with the power of the copy paste, I can probably do that. Yeah. So it's going to be SR, and there we go, there we go. Isn't that cool? Things pretty cool. So it's, number, it's not going to compile, because we don't have an used macro, we can create it. Uh, right, as you can see, it complains about it, but it's super easy to create. Right, you just void this entire thing, and there we go. It is officially unused. Unused. Uh, like my CS degree. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Um, yeah, so we can try to maybe run this entire thing and see if it like works or not. Mm -hmm. But what are we gonna be doing in here? Right. So let's go and uh, uh, maybe include a simple renderer to here. Right, so this is a simple renderer. And let's find the cursor renderer, right? So cursor, oh, it's a global thing. Okay, so let's do it like this. So this is SR and cursor renderer, uh, renderer, yeah, cursor init. Okay, so we're just initializing this entire thing. We have to provide SR. And what kind of shader do we want to provide to this thing, right? So let's actually create something like a simple vertex shader and simple fragment shader. So this is going to be like a very specific uh, set of shaders for, for those specific things and see how well does it work, All right? So uh, this is not a cursor, this is a simple thing. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so it compiled, right? Because there is no errors at compile time. There could be some shit at runtime. And as you can see, uh, there is some shit at the runtime. So we don't have simple word and simple frag. So let's go and maybe create them. So I'm going to go and attach some graph. <laughs> okay. Uh, simple word and simple frag. Right. So we have files, but they're empty. So I'm pretty sure they're not going to work anyway. Uh, unexpected end. Okay. So let's actually start maybe copy pasting some information. Uh, let's start with the vertex shader, right? So let's start with the vertex. I'm going to go into the uh, free vert in here. And yeah, let's say that we're going to use the same version, uh, the version three. Uh, in terms of uniform, I think resolution and time are quite important. So what are the attributes? So these are the attributes, right? So basically the values of those things that we were describing, right? So we were not describing all of that for nothing. As soon as we described all of that, we should be able to access them from within the shader, from within the program running on GPU uh, in like using these names, right? So these names refer to the to these values in here, right? So that's what they are. And that's why they have these indices. And these are literally the indices we were assigning to them, you know, 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth, so forth, right? So position, uh, color, right, uh, color is four, and this is UV, there we go. So these are the attributes that we want to have in our simple uh, uh, renderer, right? So this is what we want to have. 
Uh, okay, so and we need to have an entry point for the shader, uh, right? And what we're going to be doing for now, at least, uh, I think we're going to be just setting the position uh, to the position that the user provided. We're going to ignore a color and UV for now, uh, right? And we're going to just you know add support for them later, right? As soon as we have something compiling, uh, right? We're going to add support for them later. So value of the vec2 cannot be assigned to a variable a type v4. Okay, so this is basically, I just need to do something like this. Uh, so it's two-dimensional, I have to say it's zero, one, right? Okay, so now it is complaining about simple frag, right? So let's just go ahead and implement this thing. So what do we have in here? Uh, version 3.3.0 core. Uh, what do we want? What do we want? I have a feeling that for now I'm not gonna like really care about anything in the fragment shader and I'm gonna say that uh, where is the output? So I use gl frag caller and I'm gonna say that the caller is going to be let's say red right so let's say it's gonna be red just to instantly see that something has happened and as you can see everything is working properly um, so there are some problems with gl get uniform location because we literally don't have certain uniforms uh, pink fluffy uniforms <laughs> right so but this is not that big of a deal right so this entire thing still works uh, right so as you can see it is working it is in fact to working man this is so cool <laughs> really Unfortunately, I can't save anything right now, right? So it has to be uh, associated with a certain file. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we have this thing compilable, and it apparently compiles the shaders, right? So we, we saw the errors, if they, we have shaders with the errors and stuff like that. So the next thing we need to do is to implement the rest of the methods of the simple uh, simple renderer, right? So uh, let me see, simple renderer, uh, right? We need to implement render use, uh, render use, which basically switches the current shaders and vertex buffer and stuff like that. Uh, render triangle, which will probably just append uh, a triangle into this buffer, right? It will just append triangle into this buffer. And uh, draw, which will call the, uh, the draw call to render the triangles. So that's going to be basically the idea. Mm, yeah. But unfortunately, I'm streaming for one hour and I ran out of tea. So I think we need to make a small break and refill a cup of tea. So let's go ahead and make a small break. All right. Let's uh, continue uh, developing this uh, shite. Uh, so let me let me see. We need to implement the rest of the functions, right? So we need to implement uh, simple renderer use, which I suppose is going to simply do something like GL use program, uh, SR, uh, SR program. But maybe it, it has to do more. Let's take a look at the free glyph implementation of use function. Uh, and there we go, this is what we're doing here. We also bind the VIOs and VBOs. <laughs> uh, I speak OpenGL, right? Nobody understands me, it's OpenGL speak. So we bind VIOs and VBOs. VIO stands for Vertex Array Object and VBO stands for Vertex Buffer Object. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so... Still, nobody knows what the what's the difference between them. Everybody just accepts that and copy paste stuff. Uh, okay, so we implemented this thing. So let me let me see what we can do with that. Uh, I, I can try to maybe build the entire thing. I don't know why I put dot in here, but whatever. I didn't think it's gonna break anything. Uh, all right. So let me find dot main main dot c. Okay. So we have some stuff in here. Um, as you can see, we render editor, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh, I see how we do that. I just see how we do that. We do use to activate the current renderer. And then we just put things in there. And then at the end, 
we perform the draw. But the question is, where do we do cursor renderer draw? Where do we call that specific thing? Okay, we call it uh, in here. And what is this function? Render editor into FB, uh, FGB, right? So we're rendering the editor into FGB and that's how it comes to be. Right, so we use this renderer, then we use this renderer. Uh-huh. Okay. And then we call it, then we update this entire thing. All right, so that means we can experiment with the simple renderer somewhere in here. So we're gonna do simple renderer use. So this is a SAR. And let's see if it's going to work, if it's going to break or do something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna run uh, dead and... Okay, so we have some uh, problems in here. Invalid operation gel. Uh -huh. Program is not linked. We're using program that is not linked. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm really glad that we actually witnessed that. So what that means... Uh, that we attached the program, the shaders to the program, but we never actually come like linked all of that properly. Okay, that's actually very cool. Uh, so let's take a look at the init and where do we link things? Yeah, there we go. So I, I literally forgot to copy paste a little bit of code. Under copy paste it. Sometimes you over copy paste the code, but sometimes you under copy paste the code. Uh, what's funny is that I even have to pass like a file and line so I can probably report things properly. Yeah, that's actually very cool. I, I don't remember any of that. Let, let me see. Like, where where is it defined? Yeah. So essentially, if the pro program linking fails, the it will fail and point at that specific place where I call this thing. Right? It will point in here, which is kind of cool. You know, um, Jai has a similar concept, right? It has a concept of um, caller or something like that. Let, let me actually find you. Uh, right, essentially, if we find modules, so I think it's something like caller. Uh, caller, yeah, caller location. There we go. So essentially, uh, Jai, first of all, has default uh, parameters, right? So you can assign default parameters to the value. As you can see here, we have some sort of a function. I don't know what this function does, I don't really care. Uh, but it has default value null, which means that when you call this function, you don't have to specify that. And there is a quite often default parameter called caller location. So what it does, it does exactly what its name says. It takes the location where you call this function and passes that location in here. And location is, it contains information about the file path, line, and column. So if you report an error, you can actually use this location to report an error, and it's gonna point at where you call this function. But since it's a default parameter, you never have to specify it. It's automatically sort of passed for you which is kind of cool. So in C, we don't really have this kind of shit. So we have to like pass this thing manually. But in Jai, uh, I would have just like say, okay, use the caller location and just like pass it like that, but I will still have an access to where exactly this function was called in the source code so I can report everything properly. I think it's actually a very cool idea. Um, right. So I'm really looking forward to Jai finally being released because I really want to, like start writing open source projects so everyone can just like run it on their machine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, so the, the current problem for me with Jai is that I wrote some code and far from everybody can take that code and run it on their machine. I can probably distribute executables, but I mean, it's, it's more of a trust issue, right? I would rather distribute the code so then you can compile it yourself on your machine and stuff like that. Oh well, yeah, so that's that's very very cool, I think. Mm. All right. So what do we have? Uh, this is a file line, blah blah blah. Um, mm, 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 mm. And uh, now everything is linked properly, hopefully. All right. So let's try to rebuild this entire thing. Cheers. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not FGB, it's SR. That's a pretty good T actually. Mm. It's brewed perfectly. Um, okay. So let's try to run it and it doesn't complain anymore, right? So, which is super nice in my opinion. Absolutely nice. Okay, that was cool. Uh, the next thing we need to do, we need to implement the triangle, right? We need to implement the triangle. So let's see how free glyph thing implements its glyph. So we can do push, yeah. Uh, so essentially what it does, it just like appends the glyph to the buffer. So and this is something that we're probably gonna do as well, uh, right? First of all, we're gonna assert that uh, SR uh, triangle count, triangles count is less than the um, simple renderer, simple triangle capacity, right? So it's less. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna probably start doing the following thing. Um, triangles, and we wanna take the last one, and the last one is a triangles count minus one, uh, right? And we're gonna start with the vertex, uh, vertex zero, and the position of the vertex zero is going to be equal to p uh, zero, right? And essentially, we just need to copy paste this entire stuff like uh, three times: one, two, one, two. Uh, cool. So we can actually also remove this thing as well. Uh, the next one is going to be the color, right? So this is the color, and this is C. The next one is UV. So we're going to be UV. UV and 8 uh, align equal. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty freaking cool. So the next thing we can do, we can take this entire thing and maybe increment it by one. There we go. So uh, uh, it would be maybe nice uh, to have something like a simple triangle lust, right? And just like literally take the pointer to this thing so we can make it a little bit less noisy maybe last right mm -hmm. just remote so it's a, it's a tiny bit less noisy maybe <laughs> mm -hmm. so we're just like populating all of those things in here uh, and there we go there we go there we go Okay, let me try to recompile this entire thing. So we also need a way to synchronize the buffers, right? So we are appending all of these things to the CPU memory, but what we'll have to do, we'll have to then synchronize it with GPU memory. So we'll have to like add additional function in there. So it complains about lack of assert. So let's actually put assert there as well. All right, so this is gonna be that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Interestingly, it links with libpng. And I'm not really sure why. <laughs> what do we use libpng for? Uh, PNG, we are using, we also use stb image. Why are we linking with libpng? Uh, okay, I, I will try to investigate that a little bit later. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. So th this entire thing, Requires a little bit of a cleanup for sure, uh, right? It requires a little bit of a cleanup. Uh, okay, so let me let me try to see how we synchronize things with the glyph, right? So I remember it has a sync function, uh, right? So this is a sync function, and we just yeah we just do the uh, buffer subdata. We just do the buffer subdata. Mm -hmm. Hmm. This one is a little bit weird. I'm afraid that I may actually confuse myself. I'm afraid that I'm going to be actually confuse myself uh, with triangles versus vertices. Because when we presenting the data to the GPU, we're thinking in terms of vertices. But then when I'm actually adding stuff in here, I'm thinking in terms of uh, triangles. Right, so I have to be very careful in here. Interestingly, uh, I think, yeah, Jai, not, not Jai, but Simp, 
actually goes even further by creating like a put vertex um, as a fundamental function in here. I don't really want to look too much into simp because it may feel like I'm stealing the code from it. <laughs> but I'm actually getting inspired. I'm like an AI. I'm like an AI. I'm not, I'm not stealing any work from anyone. I'm, I'm getting inspired. And that's why I'm not violating anyone's copyright. So the, the, I, the AI literally thinks just like a human, so it's not stealing, it's inspiring. And that's why I can monetize the output of the AI. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, essentially, maybe I also need to um, do a similar thing. Right? Maybe I also need to do a similar thing, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, whatever. That's totally fine. Mm -mm. So, but when I'm doing, when I'm allocating the buffer, when I'm allocating the buffer, I'm actually sort of thinking, I'm actually thinking in bytes. So that's fine, kind of. That's that's fine, kind of. All right. So let's just go ahead and do a simple renderer uh, sync. All right. Simple renderer sync. When we do the sync, we just need to prov uh, provide simple uh, renderer uh, sr and that's the thing we put in here right uh, but do we need to bind anything I didn't think we need to bind anything because it's already bound by the use so that's why it's totally fine so sr triangles uh, count this is a uh, simple triangle, right? So this is a simple triangle, and the start of the triangles is this, right? So the start of the triangles is uh, this. Uh, hands underscore underscore G subscribed with tier one subscription for one month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Without any message, no message is required. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right. Really appreciate you giving money to Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, mm -mm. all right. So, and that is basically it, I think. So let's implement the draw. And the draw in our case is just an instant rendering, but it's instant rendering only for the um, for the glyphs. I don't think we're going to be doing instant rendering for this thing. Uh, we're gonna do a simple uh, GL draw array. GL draw arrays. Arrays. Mother flipper. Arrays. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Okay. So the mode is basically how we're gonna be interpreting the. Um, the vertices right so here for the glyphs i'm using triangle strip probably because a single glyph is drawn as a quad right as a quad and it's super easy to draw a quad by providing only four points and letting the gl triangle strip to sort of fill everything else so our simple render is not really like triangle strip uh, because some triangles might be disconnected right so that's why we're not going to use that uh, we're going to use like a simple uh, gl triangles Little triangles. So the first, if I remember correctly, what is first? Specifies the starting index in the enabled arrays. Uh, okay, so uh, we're gonna say it's at zero. It starts at zero. And here is the interesting catch. Okay, so it's a little bit uh, complicated. Not really complicated, but tricky. Uh, we need to specify how many vertices we want to draw. We have triangles. But each triangle has three vertices, so we have to multiply this by three, not two, three, right? So, and this is where the confusion between triangles and its vertices comes in, right? So we store everything um, as an array of triangles, but we present all of these to OpenGL as an array of vertices. And this is where the danger comes in, right? Uh, we present it as an array of vertices. And uh, we may accidentally trip us over if we confuse triangles with vertices. And this is probably why John, being experienced developer he is, 
he just stores everything in vertices and no triangles <laughs> right and that's why he has a fundamental function put vertex which just puts a single vertex in there and not put triangle so maybe i should do a similar thing but i don't know man i think it's fine <laughs> right uh yeah, but it feels like it's it's kind of redundant because like why exactly am I grouping by triangles? Because it doesn't really serve any particular purpose. It doesn't really serve any particular purpose. So I think I'm gonna put it to doing here, saying that uh, simple uh, triangle does not serve any particular purpose. Uh, maybe maybe we should just remove it question mark yeah this doesn't make any sense it only introduces um more surface area for a, for a mistake you know what i mean it's just like more surface area because you, you start confusing um triangles and vertices so i do agree with john on that i do agree with john on that mm -mm -mm. okay so let's try to rebuild this entire thing and see if it's going to do the trick Okay, so SR is not available. So in a draw, it's kind of strange. Oh yeah, I copy pasted this code from the cursor renderer, and cursor renderer didn't need its own state to render itself. So yeah, uh, but we are in a slightly different situation in here. We are in a slightly different situation. Let's recompile. Linux equal Darwin. That's funny. That is kind of funny, not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie, okay. Uh, all right, so I think we implemented everything that we need to need, we need, needed to implement. So now I can do um, triangle and I can try to put something on the screen. Right, so as far as I can understand, as far as I can understand, if we take a look at the simple shaders, right, a simple vertex shader, we're just passing the position uh, to like further along, which means that um, we don't do any transformation, any camera transformation. That means everything is in um, universal device coordinates. Um, thing unified. I, for I forgot the name of this thing, but whatever. So it's the, the coordinates from zero, from minus one to one, minus one to one, minus one to one. Uh, so if we want to create a triangle, uh, we'll have to do the following thing. Uh, let me take a uh, look at the universal. Yeah, OpenGL universal device coordinates. I think that's what it's called. Uh, normal. Uh, why? Why am I thinking about universal one? It's a normalized device coordinates. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, something is going on with my brain right now. So maybe maybe I'm getting tired. I guess that's what's going on. Okay, so back to F, uh, we need to have three of these things. Let's actually do the rainbow triangle, you know what I mean? Uh, so in here, we're going to have uh, minus half and uh, minus half as Y. Then let's put, so this is the left leg of the triangle. Let's create the right leg. Uh, it's going to be like this, but it's still going to be a minus. So the head of the triangle is going to be straight in the middle. So that means by X it's zero, uh, but by Y is going to be positive half, right? So we created the vertices for this thing, right? So these are the vertices. Now we need to create the colors, right? So we need to create the colors and the colors is going to be one, uh, zero, zero, one, right? Red, green, and blue, right? Like so. There we go. We can probably even align that. It's surprising how they're alignable in here, but it doesn't really matter. So in terms of the um, UV coordinates, I'm not sure if I really care too much about UV coordinates, right? So they're only needed if we want to have uh, textures. Uh, we don't really have textures right now, so uh, I really don't care. So this is a triangle, and after we are done with the triangle, we need to perform the... Uh, uh, the draw. We need to perform the draw call. So let's actually perform the draw call. Uh -huh. and it's going to be like that. Uh, but we also need to clean up the buffer at some point. Right, so we usually clean up the buffer somewhere here 
and I'm pretty sure we clean it up by setting uh, the count to something. Okay, so there is literally a separate function to clean up the buffer in here. So maybe we should also create it. Why not? Uh, right. So for the for the sake of consistency, and the only thing it does, it just sets the glyphs account. Maybe we should create it, but I feel a little bit lazy. So I'm gonna do the following thing. I'm going to just sr triangles uh, count equal to zero. So this is how I'm gonna clean it up. Right. So, and we're trying to render the rainbow triangle, rainbow triangle, using our simple renderer, right? So simplified renderer that can only render triangles, uh, but you specify the cores, you specify the UV coordinates, and uh, you should be good. Okay, so we didn't like that. So because it's not a pointer, it's a value. 2023, everyone, we still have to distinguish between the pointer to the structure and the structure value. Anyway, so are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? So if everything went okay, if everything went okay, we should be able to see the rainbow triangle on top of the, uh, of the main view of the text editor. And we see nothing. We see nothing. It says uh, GL uniform program not linked. That's insane. Uh, draw array no VAO bound. Okay, that's really strange. Um, no VAO bound. So, okay, if I disable this entire thing, let's just go ahead and disable and see if it, you know, works in the disabled mode. Uh, build sh. So we're getting into the classical OpenGL experience where you spend an hour writing something down, uh, you run it and you see uh, black screen, <laughs> right? Okay, so without the uh, renderer shenanigans, we don't see any problems. So everything seems to be fine, right? It's only when we enable this entire thing. Interestingly, I suppose everything should work out fine when we use this thing, right? When we use this thing. One thing we forgot, by the way, we forgot to synchronize the, the thing. Uh, like so. We forgot to synchronize it, right? I think it's kind of important. But in any case, uh, let's uh, go ahead to the simple renderer in C and see what we do in use. We actually bind VAO and we bind VBO and we bind the program. And when we initialize everything, right, we generate VAO, we generate VBO, and everything should be fine. So I don't really see any problem with that. Uh, we also, what do we do in here? We also link the program, uh, compile the program and everything. So I don't see why would it be a problem. Uh, implicit declaration of the function. Okay, so there is no such function in here. So sync, and this is probably because I didn't put this thing to the um, to the header, right? So I didn't put it to the header. So let's actually put it to the header. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it still complains. No buffer bound. No VAO bound. Program not linked. All of these things are not true <laughs> straight up uh straight up they're not true um, because if we take a look so we do the use but did we initialize the the thing did we initialize it yeah we did in fact initialize it look at that uh so we did simple renderer init which should have filled up everything in here, then compile the shader. And we know that the shader is compiled because it was complaining about not compiled shaders. So everything is fine in here. Uh, but when we try to use this entire thing, it kind of uh, falls apart, if you know what I mean. Uh, all right, so let's actually try to do something like this. What if we only uh, do render use? What's going to happen? Is it going to complain? Uh, is it going to complain about any of these things? Uh, it doesn't complain about them. Okay, so it's totally fine. It's totally fine to uh, to use those things. Right, so this operation was successful, this operation was successful, and this operation was successful. All of them were successful, so it's fine. Uh, if I try to add the triangle, right, so it's also going to be fine because we're just adding stuff into the, uh, into the buffer. We're not doing any OpenGL calls, right? 
uh, as you can see. Oh, and it's starting to complain. GL uniform program not linked. Only after we end add the triangle. Okay, so renderer triangle. Are we are dealing with some sort of corruption? Yes, we do. Because my brain usually thinks, oh, last element of the array, it's len access minus one. But I actually don't want the last element. I want the element after the last one because I'm going to increment it. And it's important because if I don't have any elements, this thing is going to be zero, which means it's going to become negative, which means I'm going to actually go before the triangles array. And what do we have before the triangles array? Well, we have those things and that corrupts them. And then I try to bind them. And that's why it complains that uh, the program is not linked because I'm actually binding non-existing program. It's just a random garbage from the memory. And that's why you have to program in Rust, right? Because Rust is the only language that has uh, array boundary checks. No other language in the world has array boundary checks. And that's why you have to use Rust. Am I right, everyone? Uh, classic C experience, exactly. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Yeah. Literally, the Rust invented array boundary checks. We never had that before. Right. Only Rust invented them. All right. So uh, let me see what we have in here. So we basically have to do this. Right. So we basically have to do this. Um, yeah. PHP has them too. Oh, PHP is as safe as Rust? The fuck? Oh, by the way, Jai has array boundary checks. It is true. It does have array boundary checks. Furthermore, it has array boundary checks at compile time. Wait a freaking second. Wait a freaking second. Okay. How did you find an array in, in, in Rust? How did you find an array in Rust? To um, I32. Right. Can I say, I don't remember in which order goes what, so I might be actually wrong on that. Uh, let me see. Uh, expected type. Okay, so for, first comes the type uh, and then the amount of things. Uh, okay, so that means I have to put it like this, right. Then if I want to do print ln, uh, can I do access zero? But can I do 10? Aha, uh -huh. okay, so it actually, um, this operation will panic at runtime. It actually catches that. Okay, so I was actually curious if it catches this kind of stuff at compile time because Giant also catches that at compile time. Uh, so let me, let me see. I'm pretty sure, I think. If we're talking about the array, the size of which is known at compile time. Uh, so let's take a look at the array. Um, right. So I don't remember. So I think it's something like this. Okay, I have two elements of integer, right? So, and it's going to be zero, zero, right? Something like this. Uh, let me do chai Linux main.chai. Is it going to compile? Type mismatch. Uh, what do you want? Uh -huh. Type given S64. Um, uh, yeah, so essentially, you probably want to do something like this and something like this. Well, in that case, you can just do it like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, and then let's import uh, basic print. And then if I say X is zero, it's going to work, but access 10 it is in compile saying that uh, subscript is out of array bounds attempt the index is 10, but uh, the highest valid index is one. Right. So J, uh, the sort of like a C spirit language, right, which allows you to do whatever you want, 
catches that at compile time as well. How about that? Mm -hmm. My god, it's as safe as Rust, isn't it? Holy shit, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Alright. But it definitely sheds a lot. Uh, okay. Oh, maybe it's not... Ah, it's probably Rust. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Rust. Uh, it's actually safe language, isn't that powers, my dude? Isn't that powers? Mm -hmm. Oh, C++ can do this as well. <laughs> Did you look there? Uh, C++ is a safe language, everyone. Why do we need Rust? I don't understand. Guys, guys, I think we wasted shit ton of time making Rust. I think we don't need it. I think we can just program with C++. Look, it's a safe language. It's a, it's a safe. All right, so <laughs> let's continue. Um, what do we have? Uh, what do we have? What do we have? Uh, uh, yeah, so we found the, the shit, right? So we found this shit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that now it should work properly, more or less. Um, let's just run the dead editor. Okay. At least it doesn't complain. Right, it doesn't draw anything, but at least it doesn't complain. All right, and this is because we don't synchronize anything. So let's actually start enabling features slowly. Right, so let's enable synchronization. Mm -hmm. Okay, synchronization is enabled. Uh, no shading in the terminal. Everything's fine. And we're ready for an actual draw call. An actual draw call. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? We're going to do a draw call. And uh, dab, 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 actual 3D try. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not rainbowish because this is something that we have to add support for in a shader, right? So it's, it's actually expected, right? So it's actually uh, expected because that's what we put in the shader. So uh, yeah, so everything's fine. Everything's fine. We are on the right track, actually on the right track. Cool. So the thing now, uh, we also need to like start uh, passing the color somewhere, right? So uh, as far as I know, we have to do output. Um, let me find the free glyph, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially, we need to have an output parameter, uh, out color, right? And we need to pass uh, that thing to here. Right, so we are receiving the color of the vertex in a vertex shader, right? So we receive position and the color and UV coordinates. So we're probably going to transform the position somehow because we have a camera and stuff like that. Uh, but we need to pass the color, right? So let's go ahead and pass the color to the fragment shader. And in the fragment shader, we have to accept the color, uh, right? Frag. So we are accepting it as vector four out color right so it's a, a out color uh-huh uh -huh. so this is what we accept uh why did i put it in here it's it's a cursor flag i think i'm being dummy dum dum uh simple frag uh input uh vec for out color and i suppose i just have to uh put it like this i just have to put it like this all right so that should be enough i think uh let's give it a try and will it give us the rainbowish triangle it won't uh because something went wrong with the vertex shader so it has to be four actually yeah uh it has to be four okay here's the rainbowish triangle on top of everything. So the shaders right now, they do not um, take into account the camera at all, right? So they do not take into account the camera. And this is probably something that we'll have to do, uh, right? So let me see how we even take the camera into account. So the cursor, let's put it this way, cursor flag, cursor uh, vertice. 
Uh -huh. So we have a camera project. Camera project. Uh, and we also have a camera ver vertex sheet. Okay, so this is very interesting. I essentially separated implementation of the camera projection. Mm. And I'm not even sure if it's that good of an idea, to be fair. So I think for for this thing, I'm gonna just copy paste the stuff in here because why not, right? So we're gonna have just that in a cursor vertex. What do we do? Uh, we just do a camera projection, and this is UV coordinates something something. Uh, cursor position. So I suppose we just need to do camera project. That's what I feel like at least, and that should be kind of enough. Uh, but here is an interesting thing. Where do we set those values? Where do we set those values? That's very important. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can find that information in this place. Uh, how do we set it? Like literally, this is where we set it. Uh, resolution, time, camera position, camera scale. And what do we need in here? Uh, resolution, camera scale, camera position. Okay. Uh, time, I'm not sure time is really that important for us. We only use time for the animation, right? For the uh, for the rainbowish animation of the, of the letters and stuff like that. So it's going to be totally fine. Okay. So here we do the use and we need to update the shaders right so it's gonna be i mean uniforms not the shaders and then we just set all of these things in here right we just set all of these things in here and that should be enough theoretically to do the projection uh yeah this one is not a point this one is not a point so what is the width and height uh what is the width and height uh -huh. get window size sure i can get the window size um i have a feeling that maybe it makes sense to move this function inside of that renderer thingy so uh, render editor into right because we have everything needed in there uh -huh. so we, we have a cursor renderer in here then we have the glyph renderer and then we're gonna have a simple renderer there as well just in a single place uh, right so and that way we have an access to w h and camera position and blah 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 so it's everything in a single place uh, right but in here it's going to be slightly different uh, right so we're probably going to be accepting this thing by a pointer through the parameters in here, through the parameters, uh, simple renderer, sr, there we go, simple renderer. So, and what do we have in here? And of course, uh, all of these things become pointers, uh, yeah. Okay, and this is sr. Ooh, mod flipper, and it failed. Uh, resolution redeclared. Okay, uh, it is true. It is in fact true. But we also have the time. So let's actually put stuff like this. Yo 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 yo. Mm hmm. Where is the rainbow triangle, chat? Where is the rainbow triangle? Do you guys see the rainbow triangle? Do you guys see the rainbow triangle? Again, so we didn't handle um, camera before. That means everything was in uh, normalized coordinates. And in normalized coordinates, it's the like minus one, one, and the triangle was like uh, zero, five, zero, five. But now we have camera and everything is in screen coordinates. So the camera now, uh, the coordinates now are in thousands. In thousands so that means the triangle must be like very 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 small like a one single pixel small and here it is this is the tri <laughs> this is the triangle yeah so it's it's from minus zero five to plus zero five by X and then from zero to zero five 
So <laughs> amazing, freaking amazing, and you can literally see it there. And <laughs> okay, so speaking of rainbow triangle, OpenGL rainbow triangle, about it. Isn't that amazing? This is my rainbow triangle. It's insane. Uh, RGB PP. PP RGB. Yes, yes, yes. How I freaking this one? Uh, okay, good. Okay, good. So now, what we can have? What we can have? Uh, we probably want to make it a little bit bigger, right? So what about uh, minus not even five, right? So let's actually get rid of all that stuff. What about 50? I think 50 is going to be visible. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. So it can't parse the float literal if it doesn't have a dot, it literally can't recognize it. Okay, that's weird, but I mean, sure. Here it is. And as you can see, it actually handles the camera, right? So we have a renderer that can render the primitives. It can render the primitives. Uh, and all of that follows the camera, right? So the camera is handled properly. And this is a much simpler uh, renderer than whatever we had before. But it's a much simpler renderer. That's pretty powgers, Madus. So, and for instance, we can already replace the cursor renderer with this thing, right? We can already replace the cursor renderer with this thing because essentially uh, the cursor, uh, right, can be split into two triangles and just rendered like that. And then eventually, as we add support for the um, for, for the textures, as we had support for the textures, uh, we can replace even Glyph Renderer with this thing, right? We can replace even Glyph Renderer with this thing. Uh, okay, go. It's actually kind of cool because in the future we'll be able to have uh, those things like different shapes in the editor, right? Different interesting shapes in the editor. What if we could implement like a programming language that allows you to uh, move this thing programmatically right on the in the editor? What if the editor was programmable and you can like literally do it? It's like it sounds like a balsamatic. Uh, Bon, how is that called? I forgot the name. Can anybody in the chat uh, post the name of this thing? Um, I, for, I forgot the name. It's basically like a shader toy, but it's a native application in real time that is also used for de demo scening and the Provot uses it all the time. So, yeah. I forgot the name. Zomatic. Uh... Uh, shaders, demo, scene, bonzomatic. Okay, I, I forgot what, what the name bonzomatic. Bonzomatic. <laughs> ah, okay, so that's the thing. Yeah. Is that one? So essentially, it's like a shader toy, but you write in the canvas in the in the OpenGL view, so to speak. Uh, right, so, and it's used quite often for like a real-time demo, demo scene uh, competitions and stuff like that. I think I even have it somewhere. Uh, yeah. Maybe in software. Uh, or maybe in the um, third party. Nah, I already removed it. I remember like I building it from scratch. I remember building it from scratch, but anyway. The camera action, I absolutely love the camera action, right? Because what's, what's interesting is that the camera action of this text editor actually follows what I do manually with Emacs, because you, you've probably seen me doing that all the time. When I start explaining something, I zoom in very, very much, and I just start typing the code, right? Uh, and then I zoom out as I type more and more things, 
uh, something happened with my font, but you, you get the idea, right? Until like I get to the you know meaningful size, right? And I want uh, the this text editor to behave like in a, in a kind of similar way, if you know what I mean, right? I want I want it to behave it in a similar way. All right, so yeah, basically I outlined the simple renderer um, in the future. I'm going to replace. Um, I'm going to replace all of the renderers with just this simple renderer, which renders the triangle. If I want to draw, if I want to render the cursor, I'm going to just render it as two triangles. If I want to render a glyph, I'm going to render it also as two triangles, uh, right? But with the corresponding UV coordinate in the texture atlas, because the way we handle the uh, fonts right now, maybe th that's going to change in the future. The way we handle all of that is basically we build an atlas of everything that we want to have in there um right and uh, uh, just set uv coordinates accordingly so as soon as we support the textures uh we'll be able to do that with a simple text editor all righty <clears throat> uh, does anyone have maybe any questions before i go Mm. It would be cool to write a program that gets continually compiled and the text is shaded by calling coverage heatmap. Yeah, th this is what I was thinking as well. Right, so maybe some sort of like a built-in interpreted language or maybe compiled language. I don't think interpretation and compilation really matters in this case. Uh, where you just change it and it constantly like changes its state and you can modify the things from within the text editor. That would be kind of cool. Right, but uh, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> all righty, all righty. All right, I guess that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one, and I see you on the next uh, Zosian session. So uh, I'm going to finish this renderer off screen, right? So basically I outlined what's going to happen. We're only going to have a thing that renders a single triangle and everything, uh, no matter how complicated it is, is going to be rendered through this uh, renderer because I don't want to overcomplicate things. I kind of want to move towards simplifying this thing as much as possible, right? So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for, for watching and I see you all on the next Azosian Accession. Love you. Mm-hmm.